Hello everyone and welcome to UT Southwestern Medical Center. My name is John Guerin. I'm with the Department of Radiology here. April is Testicular Cancer Awareness Month, so we're bringing the observance to a close with a discussion about testicular cancer detection, diagnosis, and treatment. We're here with two of our UT Southwestern physician partners in patient care, Dr. Alberto Diaz de Leon, a physician specializing in radiology, and Dr. Kevin Courtney, a physician specializing in cancer care. Before we get started, I want to remind everyone to make sure that you ask your questions in the comments section on your Facebook feed, and be sure to like and share our chat. As I said, this is a very timely topic, and we want to make sure everyone gets a chance to watch it who needs to see it, and that we get some good traction here. Please remember that neither of our doctors can comment on individual cases due to patient privacy laws. Dr. Diaz de Leon, let's start with you. Testicular cancer is rare, but every year nearly 9,000 men and boys receive a diagnosis of testicular cancer, which means that just about every hour of every day, someone hears you have testicular cancer. Yet it's also one of the most treatable cancers, especially if it's caught early. Can you tell our audience about how testicular cancer is detected and how a diagnosis is confirmed? Absolutely. So to begin with your first question of how testicular cancer is first detected, uh, in, in the majority of cases, testicular cancer is first detected actually by the patient. This is either unintentionally or by physical exam. And so usually testicular cancer can present as a palpable lump or as painless enlargement of the testicle. Uh, in some cases, there may be vague symptoms. The patient may report vague symptoms of a dull ache or a, a, a heavy sensation, lower abdomen, scrotum, and a smaller percentage of patients may actually present with a sudden onset of testicular pain. And then you mentioned of how the uh, diagnosis is confirmed. So once there's a suspicion for a testicular mass, uh, the next step would be getting an ultrasound. And so an ultrasound is an imaging technique that uses uh, sound waves to, to look at and to characterize tissues. It's a fast, uh, reliable, uh, uh, widely available technique um, that's, that's excellent at looking for at, at the testicles. And so the radiologist uses ultrasound to look through the testicle and determine whether or not a solid mass is present within the testicle. And if a solid mass is confirmed, uh, this will ultimately lead to a surgical resection of the testicle. And with that, uh, tissue can be assessed and, and determine what type of tumor it is and help uh, guide management and treatment. So does, uh, is it always detected by a suspicious lump or are there other signs uh, of testicular cancer? Well, like I mentioned, it, it, it it could be, there isn't a specific sign, unfortunately. There, there could be some vague complaints, uh, and like I mentioned, there may be some painless enlargement of the testicle. Uh, palpable lump even may not even be uh, uh, painless or painful. It, it's, uh, unfortunately, there isn't uh, anything unique to the presentation. Okay. Well, Dr. Courtney, can you explain how a, a person would do a self-exam, or would you even recommend a self-exam? Sure, so um, to, to perform a self-examination of the testicle, uh, you, it is good for uh, the patient, the person, to, to get a sense of what their normal testicles are like. Uh, usually the exam is best performed after a warm bath or a warm shower so that the scrotum relaxes. Uh, uh, the method to take is to uh, gently palpate or feel the testicle between your thumb and your first two fingers and just roll the, the testicle gently between uh, the two fingers. Uh, to uh, feel for any changes from what you normally experience. Uh, this could be a hard lump. It might be, as Dr. Uh, De Leon alluded to earlier, painful or painless, uh, or new swelling or new tenderness in the testicle uh, that would need to be evaluated further. Additionally, there are tubular structures that come off the testicle uh, that store sperm that are called the epididymis, and they can feel like sort of spaghetti-like uh, mass and it's good to appreciate what that's like so that it doesn't uh, confound you later on and uh, change your assessment of what what might be going on it's also helpful to perform uh, the exam if you can in front of a mirror uh, so you can get a sense of is has one testicle enlarged significantly compared to the other uh, unexpectedly uh, uh, in general if patients are going to perform a testicular exam uh, roughly once a month uh, is, a, is a reasonable uh, approach to take well, we have a question that's come in from a member of our audience. Kevin is asking, can testicular cancer be prevented? Would either of you like to tackle that one? 
So testicular cancer is rare. Uh, the most common kinds of testicular cancer are what are called germ cell tumors. So these are cancers that arise from the cells in the testicles that make sperm. And there, there's no, there are no specific uh, approaches to take to preventing testicular cancer. Uh, there are no specific activities that one does that increase your risk, uh, but there are some risk factors for testicular cancer. What are the risk factors? Uh, so risk factors for testicular cancer include a uh, history of cryptorchidism. And let me explain what that is. So during normal development, your testicles don't actually start out in the scrotum. They begin in the pelvis, and then they travel down into the scrotum, usually by the time you're born or within a few months afterwards. But for some uh, boys, uh, the testicle does not descend into the, sc to the scrotum, and it will need to be uh, removed uh, from the pelvis surgically. Uh, having had cryptorchidism can increase your risk over time for testicular cancer. Even with that increased risk, there are no specific screening guidelines, however. Additionally, your own prior personal history of testicular cancer or precancerous lesions, what we call intratubular uh, uh, germ cell neoplasm, can increase your risk for testicular cancer later on. Having a family history of testicular cancer and having HIV infection, particularly for a type of testicular cancer known as seminoma. Additionally, there's an increased risk associated with Down syndrome. I see. Uh, Sheila is asking if there is a suspicious lump uh, can it be found on ultrasound? Can you uh, tackle that for us? Absolutely. So, so like I mentioned earlier, ultrasound is, is an, an absolutely fantastic technique for looking at the testicles. Uh, it, it's, it is not only great at, at detecting whether or not a mass is present, it's also able to determine that with confidence that there is no mass present. Uh, the, you know, there have other techniques that have been discussed uh, and, and studied, such as MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, uh, the issue, though, is that ultrasound, like I was mentioning earlier, is, is, is fast and so reliable and, and so good at already at looking at the testicles that it's uh, um, um, the, the, the gold, I would say gold standard, but the uh, go-to technique. Uh, Rima is asking if a man who has testicular cancer can still father a child. Uh, yes, there are some risks, however. So testicular cancer itself can increase the chances of infertility. Similarly, the treatments for testicular cancer, whether it's surgical removal of the testicle or in patients who have metastatic testicular cancer, treatments whether they be with surgery or radiation or chemotherapy, can also increase the risks for infertility. So uh, do men who um, receive a testicular cancer diagnosis, does, is it generally confined to a single testicle? Are they able to preserve the second testicle if they have testicular cancer in one of the testicles? That's correct. In most cases, uh, boys or men who present with testicular cancer have testicular cancer in one testicle. Uh, there are times when you can have testicular cancer in both testicles. It's a rare event to happen concurrently. And there are also rare cases where boys or men will develop a testicular cancer in the opposite testicle later on. Oh. Uh, Sheila is asking, when would more imaging be needed? Uh, if uh, there's a suspicious, um, mass, suspicious so, te testicular cancer. So uh, once a mass is discovered by ultrasound, really the main, the next step is going to be going ahead and to to resect the, or do a uh, an orchiectomy or surgical resection of that of that testicle. Uh, when additional imaging come to play, it comes into play. It's not so much to further uh, look at that mass, but it's more so to uh, to do what's called staging. So once a there is a very high suspicion for a a tumor once afterwards uh, uh, it's um, the additional imaging such as CT would be performed uh, to determine how if how far or where the cancer is spread. Uh, Bridget is asking about the survival rate for men who receive a diagnosis. Any of you want to tackle that one? Sure. So uh, testicular cancer fortunately uh, is uh, one of our most treatable cancers even if it is metastasized or spread to other areas of the body. Uh, and the treatments can, depending upon where the testicular cancer is spread, uh, and the type of testicular cancer you have, could include surgery, radiation, or chemotherapy. Uh, but overall, uh, the survival rates are better than 95% for most patients. And I know we've already talked about uh, a man's ability to uh, father a child after testicular cancer, but we had a follow-up um, we had a follow-up question to that. How does testicular cancer treatments impact fertility? Do, do the treatments themselves have an impact on fertility? We talked about 
cancer affecting fertility, but what about the treatments? Do they, do they uh, risk um, infertility? Yes, uh, that they can risk for infertility. Uh, both having the testicular cancer and the treatments that are used uh, can increase rates of infertility. So when uh, a, a man is first diagnosed with testicular cancer and has had their surgery and undergone uh, staging imaging to look to see if the cancer has spread, before we start additional treatment, whether it's with radiation or surgery or chemotherapy, we advise men to undergo cryo cryopreservation of their sperm or sperm banking. Uh, because there is a risk from radiation therapy or from chemotherapy to damage uh, sperm production uh, and we want to try to make sure that we optimize the chances to preserve fertility uh, uh, options and that might require using sperm banking. And so if, um, let's say a teenager uh, receives a testicular cancer diagnosis, you would still recommend preserving their sperm, even though their thoughts of having a family may be decades away. Right. That's right. correct, yes. I see. Uh, we have a question here from Carl. He's wanting to know, can this kind of cancer move to other parts of the body? Uh, unfortunately, uh, testicular cancer can move to other parts of the body. One of the main locations that testicular cancer likes to spread is to what are called lymph nodes. So, uh, um, lymph nodes, uh, there's a particular pattern that tests to be the uh, t t testicular cancer likes to go to, and that's the what's, what's known as a retroperitoneum. It's a part of your uh, body, uh, of your abdomen, rather. Um, other locations, uh, it can occur, it can, it can go to the lungs as well, it can go to brain, it can go to, to uh, various organs, unfortunately. I see. Uh, Sierra is asking, what are the chances of, of a recurrence of testicular cancer? So, the, the chances of recurrence vary. Uh, and it varies depending upon what we call the histology or how the, the cancer use, uh, how, uh, how the cancer cells look under the microscope, uh, and also the spread or extent of the cancer uh, and the treatment uh, that was uh, received. Uh, so after uh, curative treatment, uh, the chance for recurrence can vary. It can be anywhere from uh, 2% up to, say, 45 or 50%. Uh, is there ever a call for an x-ray of this area of the body in male children? And if so, would that increase the risk for developing testicular cancer? So, so um, regarding your first question of whether or not there is an ever call of an x if there is ever a point of getting an x-ray, uh, no. Um, x-rays, at least within the primary evaluation of testicular cancer, does, they do not play a role. Uh, now, in terms of increasing the risk for testicular cancer, it's a, it's a kind of a, a very uh, challenging question to ask, uh, to answer. Uh, in general, um, in the, in the most the primary principle that, that we now follow is as, as low as reasonably achievable of, of a radiation dose. So you can find that most places now are going to try as hard as possible to determine uh, um, to lower the radiation dose um, as 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 much as possible. Um, and so the. With that being said, though, it, the in order when, when a study is going to be done outside of just uh, X-rays of, of uh, the pelvis, um, there it, it's always going to be taken into account of benefits versus risks. So if, if there is an acute indication, for example, someone getting a car wreck, uh, radiation at that point that this uh, is uh, it's kind of a, a second takes a second uh, takes a, a backseat to the fact of evaluating something that's something uh, potentially life-threatening immediately. Um, but for testicular cancer, at least, uh, it is not. There hasn't been a strong association of of radiation or, or ionizing radiation with actually a testicular cancer. Bridget wants to know what decides your risk of occurrence. Um, so the the risk of occurrence uh, are the risk factors that we talked about mm -hmm. earlier: that uh, cryptorchidism, family history, personal prior history, HIV infection, Down syndrome. Does race or ethnicity a factor? So uh, most testicular cancers, uh, uh, particularly in the Western world, are identified in Caucasian boys and men. Uh, but uh, anybody of any race can uh, be diagnosed with testicular cancer. Now what about strenuous physical activity? Does that have any bearing on developing testicular cancer? No, there are no uh, known associations with uh, strenuous physical activity in developing testicular cancer. 
So weightlifting, riding a bicycle, any of those things that might uh, place additional pressure on the testicle area. Yeah, those are all fine. I see. I see. Um, okay, well it looks like we've had uh, quite a few questions as part of our uh, chat today. We're going to uh, wrap things up here quickly. So um, if anybody has any additional questions, please let us know. Uh, is there anything else that uh, either of you wanted to present uh, as part of your preparation for this chat today? Well, I do want to thank everyone for joining us for this uh, important chat and for asking such great questions. Don't forget that this chat will be available here on Facebook and will also be on our YouTube channel uh, later on today. We will continue to receive your questions after this chat is concluded and we'll direct them to the appropriate team member who will be able to follow up with you. And if you need more follow-up information or if you want to schedule a follow-up clinic visit on this topic, just let us know. You can always call us at 214-645-8300 to request an appointment. Again, that's 214-645-8300. Please share this chat with your friends and loved ones so that we can help spread the word about the importance of self-exams and early detection of testicular cancer. It could save a life. I want to thank uh, Dr. Alberto Diaz de Leon for joining us from the Department of Radiology and Dr. Kevin Courtney for joining us from the Department of Internal Medicine. And uh, we look forward to our next Facebook chat. Thank you again.